This video is brought to you by Sporlin. Quality, integrity, tradition. What's going on guys? Wrapping up another day of service. I did a compressor change out today on a little self-contained process chiller for a machine fabrication shop and it provides chilled water and it cools oil that's used in a what they call a turret machine and it's basically i don't know something to do with stamping or something to do with one of the metal processes so anyway i'm on my drive home i figured it's not a bad time to shoot some video especially since i'm so presentable right now I've been getting a lot of emails uh, in the last week or so about guys uh, looking to get into the trade and into service specifically. One, they're asking if they should go straight in or you know attempt to go straight into service, you know, bypassing install because they've somehow gotten the impression that um, installing isn't a, a, a valid, honorable, or, or challenging profession and it absolutely is and then also they ask what kinds of things do I need to do to make sure um, I'm cut out for it or I have the tools I need to succeed so I thought I'd go over a couple things I, I, I tend to hype up everything about what I do um, because I really do enjoy what I do but um, it'd probably be irresponsible of me to, to never kind of go over some of the things that are either per could, it could be perceived as a negative or characteristics that may not be as common. So I could use like today's, today's service call for a good example of a couple traits that, that help somebody in service that may not be common traits in general in most people. One is that you gotta be really comfortable in being alone. Working alone, not talking or interacting with many people during the day, being independent and minimal socializing. Most people do tend to gravitate towards wanting to be around other people and talk with other people all day and don't like being alone. And service oftentimes, particularly in commercial um, and larger environments where you could be in a building nowhere near another soul. Uh, residential, you probably have a little more proximity to homeowners, so there, there's probably more opportunity to chit chat and small talk, but um, I didn't speak to a soul today. And uh, luckily for me personally, I thrive in that. I I, I like talking on YouTube and stuff, and, and I can it kind of helps me open up a little bit, but I'm, I'm actually a pretty anti-social person in general. I don't I'm not a, a bar person, a, a concert person. I don't like going to big events. So like for me, a service job where I'm kind of, you know, riding alone, working on my own, uh, and have time to myself and my own thoughts, it works for me. So it's something you need to keep in mind when you're uh, really pushing to get into a service role. Are you somebody that's going to be able to be productive, efficient, and enjoy yourself with minimal interaction with other people? Two, on the other side of that coin, while you will be working alone a lot, you need to be very good at speaking with customers when the time does come. I have some new people coming in and no, we need all the space we can get. But there's no space. So if you... And that's another area where I think a lot of people lack. A lot of people love being around other people to like shoot the shit and, and uh, goof off and talk and stuff like that. But when it actually comes to having professional, informative, polite, tactful conversations with a customer, a lot of people need a lot of work with that. So while you need to be able to work alone well, you also need to be able to flip that switch when the time comes and all of a sudden be like a guy or girl that really knows their stuff and is able to articulate that in a professional manner that's empathetic and aware of the customer's needs and wants. You need to be prepared for a life without a normal clock. And I'm speaking about service specifically. For the most part, installers or projects teams fabricators, etc., tend to have a, a more standard schedule uh, when they are working. So if it's something where they get laid off or, you know, it's a seasonal thing with installs, that, that's one thing. But when they are working full time, for the most part, it's a structured preset schedule. But in the service world, you've got to throw all that in the garbage, especially in the summertime. Calls will back up. You're going to be expected a lot of times to be willing to go past conventional work week hours. You're gonna be expected to help 
on certain weekends when the time comes and the call arises. You may have one call that takes you way into the night and uh, it could be a customer or a situation that it can't be left alone until the next day. So this is something you have to ponder, especially if you have families. This is something I still struggle with. I mean, um, even at my point in my career, I still have not fully embraced or come to terms with the demand that this trade sometimes brings to me and my family. I have three kids under five years old, and it's a time that I really wish I had a, a ton more time at home, and, and, and unfortunately, that's not always the case. So this is something that if you do have families, uh, you need to talk about this with your spouse, your kids if they're old enough to understand, and uh, make that decision together. Be prepared to not get the glory and the recognition and the attaboy type stuff just rained on you as you become a better service technician. We see a lot of that on social media and a lot of self-praise and a lot of guys that uh, uh, take to social media to get that type of out-of-boy stuff and, and uh, sometimes it's to help other people a lot of times it's just to show off and I can tell you for sure the reason that they do it is because it's not something that you're going to get very much on the job in fact uh, oftentimes you'll feel quite unappreciated so you have to be somebody that doesn't need constant um, stroking, pats on the back, good job buddy, congratulations type stuff. You're gonna have to be content with um, giving that to yourself and seeing that in yourself and having those small victories as you hit milestones in your career or solve big problems um, that you never thought you'd ever be able to solve. It's not gonna come from the customer a lot of times, and it's not gonna come from your uh, office a lot of times, okay? Because at the end of the day, you're there to make money, you're a number, and oftentimes they don't come from that world, your world anyway, so um, it, it, won't, it won't play the same way to other people, and that's just the way it is. So again, if you're somebody that's looking to get into this because you wanna feel like a superhero uh, to other people, may want to consider something else. The last thing I'd bring up is the fact, and it should be obvious to most people, but I'll mention it anyway, this is a very physical job. If you're just getting out of high school or you're just getting into the trades for the first time, you know, you're not, you're not lateral moving from being an electrician or something like that, but you're maybe coming from an office job or retail, something like that, and you want to get into the skilled trades, um, that's gonna be a reality check for you. This is a, um, a job that is gonna put a big toll on your body every day. And, and that's if you're, that's whether your service, install, I don't care what it is. Um, if you're gainfully employed in this trade and you're booked for eight solid hours a day, I don't care if you're uh, servicing stuff or installing it, you're working. You're working hard, you're busting your butt. And there's ways to mitigate that and reduce uh, reduce the chances of injury and, and strain and stuff like that. But at the end of the day, it's still gonna add years to your body. So it's something else to keep in mind. I know that you all must know that it is a physical job, despite the advances in technology. But it's still something you really need to think about and uh, weigh when you're considering a career like this long term. So anyways, guys, those are just some kind of thoughts in my head. I'm rambling out as I drive home. Believe it or not, on time today too. I'm actually gonna be home uh, by five o'clock. But for you old salt dogs that are in the uh, comments section there, let some of these uh, guys know as well, anything I missed that uh, are things involved with getting into the service world that um, are things worth pondering and considering when they're weighing their options on getting into the trade. For those of you that were not able to pay attention to this video the whole time because all you could focus on was my badass magnet scene that I have up here, and yes, I did make that myself. I set that up. Yes, I am five years old. This is why I joined the Marine Corps, and this is why I shave my head and grow a long beard 
and uh, covered myself in grease today because I have to try as much as I can to hide the fact that yes, I am indeed five years old. And if you think that's bad, wait until the new full featured van tour I'm coming out with soon and you see what's in the back. But anyways, guys, I'll let you go. Thanks again for watching. Let me know again in the comments if you have anything to contribute. Stay safe, and we'll see you on the next one.